Praise God. Amen. Our foundation scripture is found in the book of um, Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Let's turn there briefly this morning. I'm reading from the Amplified Classic. It says, so repent. Are you there? Change your mind and purpose. Turn around and return to God. That your sins may be erased, blotted out, wiped clean. That times of refreshing. And then he amplifies the meaning of recovering from the effects of heat, of reviving with fresh air, may come in the presence of the Lord. And we defined this last week, you know, um, a time of recovering from the effects of heat, revival, fresh air, strong concordance calls it a time of revival. Hallelujah. A recovery of breath. You've been running, you are out of breath, you are tired. You need to be refreshed. You need to take in fresh air. Hallelujah. Another dictionary, I believe the Cambridge says, bringing new energy and strength in a pleasant and often unexpected way. In this season, God would do some unexpected things. Hallelujah. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures and arrayed him in, in vestures of fine linen and he put a gold chain about his neck. And last Sunday, I touched the ring. I believe I touched the linen a bit. But the question most people will have, let's go to Psalm 105 from verse 17 to 22. The question most of us have many times is, why does it take so long for this season to come? The Bible says in Psalm 105, 17, he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with feathers. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach the senators wisdom. He took Joseph a long time, 13 years of obscurity. Exodus 23, 29, and 30. Exodus 23, 29, and 30. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beast of the field multiply against thee. Let's say the next word together. By little and little, I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. So, one of the thoughts I want to share with us this morning is that God compensates your little steps of faith in your season of refreshing. God compensates your little steps of faith in your season of refreshing. The problem sometimes with the word of the Lord to us is that when God gives you a prophetic word, he does not tell you the process through which that word will be fulfilled. Amen. He told Abraham, I'll make you a father of many nations. Exciting. 25 years went by before they ever saw Isaac. Hallelujah. And on the way, Abraham got tired of waiting. How many of you have ever gotten tired of waiting before? He said, Lord, you can do this thing fast. Let's have a microwave miracle. How many of you know microwave is very fast? You just push it in, you push it out. But my friend, there's no microwave faith. There's no microwave miracle. It is not in the Bible. Abraham believed God, but it took time. He was tested in his belief. But there's a season of refreshing upon you. I know you've been through some tests, but God sent me to tell you this morning, there's a season of refreshing upon you. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. I say hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. So Joseph had a word, but God did not forget to tell him. God just didn't tell him. I think if God told most of us the process, we are going to say, God, look for another person for that job. Hallelujah. Somebody is giving you a prophecy. You will be rejecting it before the man finish. He said, thus said the Lord, you are going to be a prime minister, but I want you to know your brothers are going to collect 20 pieces of silver over your life. 
They will try to actually kill you. They will put you in a well. And, uh, uh, and from the well, they, somebody will rescue you. If they don't kill you bad, then when they bring you out of that well, then they will see some people. They, 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 they will kidnap you. When <laughs> they finish, <laughs> they will carry you to a land you have never been before. You will end up in Libya somewhere. And God will do a miracle while you are there. You will be a houseboy for like uh, many years. Then they will lie against you. Then you are going to go to a prison called the dungeon. And uh, many things will happen in your life, but before I even reach prophecy, I say, oh, 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 I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Take that prophecy and give another person. How many of you know that's true? So that's why God doesn't bother you with the details. He just said, You are going to be a prime minister and you will shout. But He doesn't tell you the steps towards that prime ministership. He said, But He said, There are some beasts in life. There are some beasts in life that if he gives you overnight, those beasts will consume you. He told the children of Israel, listen, I can give you that land in one day, but the animals there will be more than you and they will overcome you. But he said, by little, by little, I want to say that God compensated Joseph for all the times he went through all those hardness, for all the time that things did not seem to work for him for all the time that he was betrayed for all the secret tears you know he left home without even saying bye bye to his father without saying bye bye to the only brother little brother he had he, his own brothers were the ones that arranged it if it was strangers that kidnapped him he will understand but when your own senior brother arranged your kidnap collected the ransom and lied to your father that you have already died how many of you know that can bring permanent depression to somebody's life. But the boy says, listen, I am saying he that is invincible. I'm going into Egypt, but I'm not going alone. I'm going into Egypt, but God is going with me. I'm going into a place where I have no forwarding address. I don't know anybody. I've been rejected by my family, but I'm going into Egypt knowing that there's a God in Zion. I want to announce to a child of God today that every tear you've shed, all those bitter moments in your life, things that have been so hard that you even find it hard to explain to anybody. God, I don't know how I got myself here. I've not really done anything to deserve this. How many of you know you go through some things, you've do, you don't know what you have done, you don't know what you have not done but you are in a fix but I want to say to you God is about to celebrate you somebody I said God is about to celebrate you somebody God is about to celebrate you somebody it's called continuous assessment tell your neighbor continuous assessment the season of refreshing is when your continuous assessment counts is there any educator here? Teachers, principals, I'm sure you are somewhere. You won't raise your hand. Educators, educators, raise your hand. If you're an educator, you're a teacher. You know, in primary, they used to tell us that teacher, if, if the chalk wants to drop, it must not drop on your head. That means you will teach for life. Can you imagine the way we think about teaching? So one of my teachers, math teacher, if the chalk is finishing in his hand, you will see him jump back like this. I said, why are you jumping? Ah, I said, if you drop on my head, I'll be teaching for life. But how many of us will be here if we didn't have teachers? Let's celebrate our teachers. Teachers, stand up. I want to celebrate you. If you're a teacher in the house, I want us to stand up now. I want to celebrate the teachers in the house. You better clap for them because without them, you will not be where you are now. I know you went to school, you have money now. But without these people, you will not have any money. If you are a teacher, I want you to stand up. Let's celebrate our teachers. Let's celebrate our teachers in the house. Come on, give them a, a rousing celebration. Thank you, our teachers. I will never forget Mrs. Egubong. She's late now. She's the one that taught me how to write. So patient. Huh? Eh? She, she's the wife of a deacon in Baptist church. She will hold your hand like this. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. That's when teachers were teachers. Uh, I didn't say not anymore. <laughs> La me, you don't put me in trouble with teachers. I didn't say not anymore. 
Hallelujah. How did you get into that teacher thing? Pastor Victor, how did you get into that teacher? Continuous. Let's have a teacher help me. Mrs. Zikani, are you here? Mrs. Sule, who is here among you? Stand, stand, it's okay. If a student, continuous assessment, disappeared from the school and appeared on examination day, why? Please, if that student got everything correct, is that student going to pass? She said no. Is he going to pass? Why wouldn't that student pass? He didn't have continuous assessment. Do you agree with her? Thank you, ma'am. Sit down. You see, all those your tears, they are your continuous assessment. All those times you felt like throwing away your Bible, you say, but I will still go to church. They are your continuous assessment. The time you had miscarriage in the morning and you still went to church for service, it's your continuous assessment. Do you know some women will go through that kind of thing? They will come to church still. Say, devil, you may steal my baby because you cannot steal my God. Heaven will write it down for you. The time that crazy husband panabited you. I didn't call anybody's name. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. And you still came to church. It's your continuous assessment. The time your mouth was driving rough and you finished your husband and he felt like weeping on Sunday morning. But he still came to church. It's his continuous assessment. I think I have balanced it in there, right there. <laughs> Because some men, were, some men were looking at me, Pastor, what is this one you're talking about? But all those difficult moments in our lives, when we stay true to God, the Bible says, God, we even store your tears in a bottle. Child of God, don't give up on God. Joseph could have given up in prison. He could have given up in Potiphar's house. But he made up his mind that there's somebody marking a register in heaven. Heaven is keeping a different scholarship. And in the day of your promotion, God will not consult your enemies. He will consult your assessment in heaven and say, listen to me. This child has been faithful in good time and in bad time. And the season of refreshing is time for a lifting up. You believe your lifting up is here. Can you lift your hand and give a Lord a shout in the house of God today? It's my season of lifting. Can somebody give a Lord a shout in the house of God?